Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. It is December 1st of 1861, and the people have spoken over on Patreon, where uh, you overwhelmingly voted that we should next choose Military 2 in our policy selection. So that's what we're going to choose. It's going to take 45 days for that to happen. But we'll go ahead and put that in motion. In the meantime, we'll continue to do our best to recruit and get the folks that we need uh, into our armies to be able to hold back the Yankee hordes and then eventually make a move toward the north. I'll continue getting those patron units in and we'll see how it goes today. Well, here's some good news right here. We just bought back some bonds, $10 million on the public debt markets at a current interest level of 6.86%. Uh, so we reduced our total debt to 10 million. Uh, we've got a decent surplus going right now. So that's actually really, really good news for us financially. Uh, it's been almost a week and I'm curious to see if we're getting anywhere with our recruitment levels. So let's go ahead and uh, try to add and see what kind of recruits uh, or see we're starting to get some recruits in the pool now this is really good news we're up to 61,000 uh, and I have a feeling the Yankees aren't gonna be far behind on doing this so let's go ahead and recruit up some new units all right looks like the Department of the Ohio slipped past me and in into Eastern Tennessee so we're gonna send the Army of Georgia back down there to deal with them though they've got 28,000 men so they're coming for me Ooh boy that's more men than I'm really prepared to deal with. But let's see what we can do. So this is Breckenridge. He's outnumbered two to one, but we're going up against McClellan. So I'm hoping that'll help even our odds. All right, so let's uh, see what we can do here. It's interesting to see uh, fighting a battle with John C. Breckenridge. I just watched The Field of Lost Shoes last night, which is a movie about the uh, events surrounding the Battle of New Market where the uh, the cadets of Virginia Military Institute marched into battle and ended up fighting at the center of the Confederate line in a victory there. Uh, and it was uh, Jason Isaacs, who's one of my favorite actors, who plays John C. Breckinridge, and I thought did a really good job as a British actor playing a Southern American former vice president turned Confederate general. Um, I thought he did really well and played him very sympathetically. But uh, decent movie. Check it out if you get a chance. Uh, so it looks like we're, is this the Cumberland Gap map? I kind of figured that's where we'd be fighting um, just because we are pretty close to that area. This is uh, basically a, a map where you've got just this little area to kind of march through and most of the fights end up taking place right at the Cumberland Gap. Uh, I'm going to try to get there and hold that position as best I can. That may actually help us being outnumbered to be able to fight in such a position. So let's see what happens. All right, so it looks like we are going to get to the objective in the gap first. I sent uh, George Stewart's Peninsula Cavalry up there to grab that objective, and it looks like they're going to do so successfully, which is hopefully going to force the Yankees to attack me. Now, we're going to throw our guns right down in that gap, I think, although it would be really nice to be able to get them up on the hill here. I'm just not entirely sure how easy that's going to be. Uh, it's going to make them super tired bringing those guns up there. What I'm hoping will happen is we hit nightfall and we can redeploy before the enemy hits. That would be an ideal situation. Okay, we've got the position and now we just wait and here he comes. I'm waiting on getting these guns up. Uh, my other guns were successful in getting up onto the ridge. Hopefully they can fire from here. It's a great spot. Looks like they are opening up on the lead uh, brigade that's coming down. So I've got Stuart's cavalry here in the center. And then we'll have infantry on either side. They've got Enfields. They've got Lawrence's. So from left to right, here's what we're looking at. We've got the New York Copperheads on the left with 2,800 men. Danish Legion, 2,600 under Bernard B. We've got the Peninsula Cavalry, 1,600 strong in the center. And Deseret Volunteers under Nichols with 2,800 men here. The Lookout Mountain Battery is uh, perfectly placed on a mountain that's not unlike Lookout Mountain. 
Uh, and then we've got the Tar Heel Legion under Dorsey Pender on the right. And this other battery, the Hampton Division Artillery, coming up now. I may try to get them up on a hill somewhere. Looks like the Yankees are just going to sit tight for now. But he's going to have to attack me eventually because uh, we've got the advantage now. We've got the one and only one objective. We've got a little bit higher morale. Now we sit and wait. All right, we've hit the end of the day. We'll see. I would imagine he's going to redeploy somehow. But this allows me now to do a little bit of my own redeployment. And that's going to start with redeploying these guns somewhere more effective. I don't know if I can get them up on this hill or not. On this ridge would be perfect. It looks like I can. Nice. And that saves me from doing that in a situation where they get worn out. Um, Pender... I'd actually like to put him down there and put the cav up here just to protect the guns. And that way I have all my infantry in one spot. I'm going to give all these guys long range orders. Now I'm going to put the New York Copperheads actually up here a little bit closer so they can get some flanking fire in, in here. Oh, parapets. Oh, yeah, let's do that, too. Because if we can if we can get some parapets going, then this becomes an even more impregnable position. That would be great. It might take a little bit of work to get it just right, though. All right, he's coming at me. Pender had some skirmishers out, so I'm just pulling them back in. And i got to move Charles Winder's artillery forward just a little bit because now that I have the Deseret Volunteers where I do, they don't have a spot to fire. So we're going to do that. Uh, Danish Legion, I'm going to pull them forward in front of their parapets for now. These Mississippi rifles have a nice long range. But we still need to move them down a little bit so they can start firing into the flanks. Bring B forward, and then we should be able to get three brigades firing here. Oh, Pender. Please don't leave the parapets, whatever you do. Although it looks like he's out of them right now. Otherwise, we just got to sit tight. He's got a lot of men. Remember, we're out number two to one here, so the more we can wreak havoc on him before his full force gets into position, the better. Oh, this is new. We can now see what units they are targeting when firing. That's very cool. It'd be very nice, Pender, if you would start doing long-range fire, though. I mean, the Copperheads ought to be able to start firing on these guys here soon. Got those Mississippi rifles with a nice long range. Pender absolutely will not accept my order to fire at long range. So he's pretty much worthless to me right now. Alright. New York Copperheads with their Mississippi rifles have opened up. Danish Legion's doing really, really well. So far, so good. Are these guns firing? They are. Although I think we'd be better served if they moved forward just a little bit. Yeah, these guys are going to get exhausted trying to climb this hill. And that really works well for me. French hasn't lost a man, but he's down by 10 rounds already. We're going to inflict heavy losses on the Federals. 34 casualties to 1,100. So he's doing what he has to do here, which is to charge in at the gap. Actually makes total sense for him to do that. But I don't think he's going to make it. Oh, now the Deseret Volunteers are also doing the feud thing. Ugh. What's 
they likewise do not have the range from here to be able to fire. Alright, let's send out some skirmishers. At the very least, we can do that. The second brigade, boy, they are taking a beating. So is Wool, for that matter. This might be the most one sided casualties we ever see in a battle just because my position is so strong. Pender, get in those fortifications. We're gonna have to check our commanders after this because Pender obviously has, uh, these guys obviously have an issue with somebody. Negley's division, they're, they're in different divisions. Man, this, this brigade got right up on the New York Copperheads, which reduces their effectiveness of, uh, from their long range Mississippi rifles. But still, look at the casualties. If you figure this is one-on-one, -on -one, now, granted, they're taking casualties from the artillery, too, but New York Copperheads have taken 59 losses, and the unit in front of them has taken 700. I think things are a little tighter down in the center of the gap, though. Get another overall look here. All right, looks like we're breaking these guys. That helps. If we can drive them back, we can bring French around and start firing into their flank. I'm going to pull back here if I can. All right, he's gonna he's gonna go right at Pender in the center. We've taken 500 casualties. That's uh, nothing to laugh about. That's for sure. As long as he holds his other division back, we're in good shape. This is McClellan. He's not going to send everybody at me at once. He's going to be cautious. These guys firing. All right, I want you to fire on that battery. of those trees. Alright, things have quieted down now. Let's send some skirmishers forward. Now he's just put skirmishers out from these brigades. I think those brigades are going to come at me. But what I'd like to do here is I'd like to send the skirmishers out to target these guns. drive off the battery before he brings in more yeah I think he just sent an order to pull pull them back he did all right good news so far so good let's take a look at the situation after all of that we drove off the first battery 100 killed for me 400 killed for him is the estimate four to one casualties right now which is good considering it's two to one uh, in manpower, so we're going to probably face at least one more attack before it's all done. Okay, here they come. It's uh, still just 11 o'clock in the morning, and we've got another division coming at us. We'll leave the skirmishers out there. 
for now. At some point we'll have to pull them back in. I am a little bit worried about the ammunition situation. Nichols detachment needs to come back in. Let's go ahead and pull them all back. How are we doing on casualties? Danish Legion has lost 500 men. That's rather substantial. I'm a little concerned about that. I'm going to pull them back. They're also down to just 24 rounds. All right, Deseret Volunteers, I think this one might be coming at you. Need to get French pulled forward here. Our Storm and Mormons, let's see how they do. I love those uniforms, they look really nice on the battlefield. You really use these Mississippi rifles moving forward a little bit, although it looks like they've got folks in range now. Alright, I think we're going to bring Stewart's cab down a little bit, get them firing. We're going to need the help. almost 900 men now. His percentages are still higher, but we are taking some casualties. Our morale's better though. And I think we're going to be okay. I'm just a little worried about uh, ammunition. The Danish Legion in particular, who are currently facing backwards. All right, so now our Mississippi rifles have a chance to uh, fire into the flanks of these guys that are coming down toward my left. I think this thing's just about over. This battle was over when I got to the gap first. Honestly, that was that was it. McClellan not getting to the Cumberland Gap before me is what cost him this battle. If he'd have, if he'd have gotten to the gap first, I would have had to withdraw because he has the numbers. All right, I think we got him. That's a nice battle to hold off and drive them back into Kentucky out of Tennessee. All right, they're retreating. That was a really nice victory, and that, that was all about terrain. I'm not sure. Uh, it was terrain, and it was the fact that it was McClellan, which meant he was really timid in his attack. Uh, had it been any other commander in any other battlefield, being outnumbered 3-1, to one, I never would have been able to hold. So I think maybe part of the problem here is, for example, we've got Dorsey Pender, who has three stars of fame. He's a rising star. And uh, you can actually now see uh, the changes that take place and what that uh, is affected by uh, or how it affects. So, uh, for example, leadership here, last, latest changes, plus 1.74% uh, influence of senior officers. So I think the fact that we've got a guy who's a relative unknown is actually hurting him as far as the, the feud thing goes. Uh, we had the same problem over here. Uh, again, Negley is like a just a completely unknown quantity. Uh, so we've got to replace him with somebody that's got at least two stars of fame in order to avoid that. Uh, John Pelham looks like a good choice. Uh, so we're going to give Pelham the division young guy uh, who died historically. Uh, performed admirably at places like uh, Fredericksburg, killed later in the war. Uh, Sir Well, same thing. We've got to get somebody in there. Uh, I guess we could promote somebody like Pender, but uh, I'm thinking I might just find somebody else who's already in here. That's got some fame and got some decent stats. I'm just not sure we're going to find it. Leonidas Polk. Oh boy, I really don't know if I want to put the fighting bishop in there. But I don't see a lot of other really good options. Benning might be decent. 
Vendor Law, no. Yeah, I think Bending's gonna have to do for now. Okay, so I'm a little concerned about the fact that I'm gonna have to face McClellan again, and this time it's gonna be on more favorable ground to him. Uh, I feel like that might result in a loss. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, pull the Army of Georgia back before we make contact. Uh, and then we're gonna transfer uh, some divisions to him to give him a better chance in this next fight. Uh, we're gonna send at least temporarily, Magruder's division from the Army of the Appalachians. Uh, that's going to give the Army of Georgia 21,000 men. They'll be there in six days. And then we're going to take an army, or take some men from the Army of Tennessee and send them as well. Yancey's independence are still seven days away. Uh, how about Cox Division? I'm just looking to see who we have in these different units. I'm going to send Adams Division over. And that will take them seven days, and by then the Yancey Independents will have joined them. Alright, so it looks like the Medal of Honor has been introduced by the United States. That did happen in 1862, uh, historically. I'm a little concerned about the Army of Georgia. Um, they're out of supply. So that's a major problem. How soon do they get that other division? One day. All right. So let's go ahead and start moving. We've got we've got to fight. Uh, we can't wait any longer because we've got serious supply issues. And by the time we get into combat, we should have the additional troops. We do. The Department of the Ohio has the same problem with supply. Uh, so it looks like we're going to retake Knoxville. And then we can start building up our supply base again. Perfect. That's a level 2 depot. We're going to upgrade to level 3. Alright, we've got combat. And we've got a nice advantage. Army of the Shenandoah, Army of Northern Virginia, which we have tag teaming uh, in Northern Virginia right now. We're taking on McDowell's Army of Northeastern Virginia. This is going to be a big battle. Alright, well we are on the Tran Chancellorsville battlefield again. Battle of Culpeper Courthouse. Lee's army is going to move in on my left flank over around Wilderness Church. Uh, we've got Johnston's army moving in on the right. They're going to try to connect the line right here just west or just uh, north and east of Chancellorsville. I have no idea where the enemy is going to appear. Uh, but we hold the only objectives, so we're pretty much going to be fighting on the defensive, and I would expect he will come down from somewhere up here, it looks. So maybe right here in Chancellorsville itself. We will see, though. All right, he is coming down the center road, and that is the one place I am not in position yet. I'm still working on uh, getting my army into position, so uh, we're going to have to figure this out. Let's get Withers Division up that way as quickly as we can. Uh, I'm going to try to plug them in right in here between these two waterways. We'll probably have to hold the guns back. I've got Steele's guns right here, but I've got to move them a little bit. Oh, it's the day after Christmas. I didn't even think about that. It's uh, snowy time. Let's get Donovan's Brigade and their mixed muskets over there. Martin Smith, same thing. So we're not exactly dealing with our crack top of the line troops here that are going to be moving in and holding the center. That's not an ideal situation. Let's bring Zollicoffer up. Get his three brigades in there as quickly as we can. These units here are, uh, that's part of Withers Division. Let's hold another brigade back here. The Mars 1st Regiment, one of our new units, they're attached directly to Lee. So I'm actually going to bring them over here into the woods and have them as kind of a reserve. I want early to keep an eye out, especially on this crossing right here. We're still waiting on 
some of our units to get into position along here. These guys are exhausted from all their marching. Morale's pretty even. The Union actually has just a slight advantage on morale, but we've got the objective points, and we've got a heavy advantage in numbers. You can hear some guns coming down in. These Georgia artillery, I'm going to move them right here so they're in a little bit more of a, Actually, I want them down here where they're up at elevation and in a clearing. All right, here we go. First contact. Again, don't have very good weapons here. These are mixed muskets, so not much range. Steel's Battalion, only six pounder field guns. We still have a real lack of decent weapons beyond some of our patron units, really. All right, I'm keeping an eye out just to watch my flanks. It seems like most of the action is going to be here in the center, which is where I'm weakest. Withers is going to pull in right here. I'm going to bring Maxie's brigade or Maxie's division back here as a reserve. It's just uh, two brigades and a battery. It's got the Norfolk Admirals, Battery G, and the Staunton, the Stanton rifles. I always want to say Staunton, but that's actually pronounced Stanton. Okay. 5th Georgia, let's put out some skirmishers, deal with these guns if we can. comes the rest of his army. I'm going to push Zollicoffer up a little more over here. These six pound, oh those are 25, 24 pounder howitzers. They don't have a lot of range though is the only problem. Let's see if we can get them up a little closer. Double check and make sure nothing else is happening on the line. Pretty good right now. I'm pretty content just to to hold the center with what I've got. If I need to bring in reinforcements, I will. Okay, we've reached the next day. I'm going to go ahead and redeploy. I've got the opportunity to do that. I'm going to hold these guys back still just because I'm concerned about the possibility of something happening at that crossing, but I am going to push forward with a lot of my other troops because we do have such a numerical advantage. Plus, it gives me a chance to kind of resort some of these problems that I've got at the moment. Still got to get this battery somewhere in the clearing. All right. We're not real good on the center here. Let's get Sibley's division up a little bit. So I'll cough where I'll hold right there. And I think I'll go ahead and bring the sexy division up here. But again, it's so hard to use the guns on this battlefield because of all the trees. All right, let's see what they do, because they may redeploy also. Nope, they're going to hold right where they are. I 
Rear Valley Brigade's got reboard muskets. Those are about the best I had available at the time. Rex's Raiders uh, under Benjamin Harden Helm. Right there. All right, let's wipe out this battery. They're stuck out front by themselves. We'll make them pay for that. Send in Smith's Brigade to take care of business here. I should have moved Maxie's Brigade up. Or Division up. Alright, Mighty Special Forces. Let's move them. Let's get Pillow moving. There's all the coffer moving right here. Let's have Withers send out some... Uh, Skirmishers. Actually, they're already in range. First Georgia. Fifth Georgia. Then the Georgia Hussars arrived. Skirmishers, please. Alright, we wiped out that battery. Let's move Sibley up. To the left of uh, Bullocks here. Although I'd kind of like to keep Steel where he is. And then I think we just kind of wait and see what he does. I really don't have to attack at all. It's been pretty minor so far as far as the casualties go. Only 76 on my side, 250 for him. Most of those were from that battery I just attacked. Pushes all the coffer up. So right now Withers Division is going to be kind of the lead here. Let's get Bragg to dismount. Norfolk Admirals. Going to move into position up here. Stand rifles will come in on their left side. And Battery G is going to be right up here in this clearing on the hill. Alright, let's push forward. River Valley, Rex's Raiders, and then the Hungarian Impalers are in reserve right now. This is an absolute disaster waiting to happen for the Union. He's only got 28,000 men. Speed this up for a little bit. So William Tecumseh Sherman with a brigade in there. He did command historically, he commanded a brigade at the first battle of Bull Run, as did Burnside. Well content to sit tight at the moment. We've got two full brigades firing on these guys here. I think my numbers, I mean he just really doesn't have a chance. We'll just play this out. He's lost four percent to my less than one percent right now. No, 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 don't do that. Let's go right here. have Withers send out skirmishers. We can at least engage Baker right here. Do the same with Kemper, although Kemper has Enfield. He ought to be able to hit Sherman's Brigade. He's sending everything he's got at me now. He's going to try to push for a victory. 
but I'm just, I'm too strong in too many places. We should start seeing some, some perks here getting unlocked in some of these units. Rex's Raiders is about two thirds away of the way to their first perk. Yeah, he's falling back now. I'm going to send out skirmishers from Zollicoffer if I can. Oh, man. Who just broke? Was not expecting that. Is that the River Valley Brigade? They only lost 11 men. No, it wasn't. It was Martin Smith. Sorry, Ruhr Valley. Did not mean to Im implicate you there. They lost 842 men. And they only had mixed muskets, so that was a pretty rough performance by them. And why are these guns... No, 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 no. Stop. Well, Holly's Hurricanes are about to have a nightmare scenario here, so we gotta protect them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna charge in with these two, ba uh, two brigades. Norfolk Admirals and Donovan's Brigade to try and protect these guns before they lose too many men. Although this may lead to a real problem in my center if Donovan breaks. Oh, he just broke Sher uh, Sherman. Excellent. He'll probably break himself, but that's okay. We'll bring up Canty's Brigade to plug that gap. Let's push River Valley forward. Are these Yankees in gray uniforms? I believe they are. It happens. Alright, I'm going to tell Withers to go ahead. We're going to give him an AI stance of attack. Go ahead and start pushing forward, Withers. We're going to bring Pickett around through these woods. See if we can finish these guys off. So about 2,000 losses for me, 4,000 for him. Here goes Withers. Gotta watch Helm. He's lost 340 men. They're they're showing as unstable, and there they go. Man. Some powerful fire. It must be for, from his battery there. I don't know why I'm having such trouble just in this spot with units breaking. Alright, Hungari Hungarian Impalers, you're up. Sure, what Withers is doing so far. He's still issuing orders, it looks like. Donovan, hit him again. They're exhausted. That might not have been the best idea. Norfolk Admirals hit him again. They're tired too. Oh, jeez. Withers is going all out. Bragg just went charging headlong into the 3rd Brigade. This is probably not going to end well. Georgia Hussars. Hussars, sorry. Alright, we broke Baker. There goes Sherman again. There goes Schenck. That should be it. Awesome. Well, that was, I mean, that was a foregone conclusion just because we had such heavy numbers. I wasn't too worried about losing that one. Inflicted 2 to 1 casualties solid. Pretty happy with that. Alright, that's going to be enough to take us into a new year. What is that? Courier to Division 3696. We got a little glitch there. Might have to do a little repair on the install because of all the updates. 
All right, we're going to wrap it up right there. Uh, that's going to take us into 1862. Long, long way to go in this campaign. The Union's not even close to breaking yet. Uh, and he's going to at some point pass uh, the policy that's going to allow for the draft. And then he's suddenly going to have a million recruits. And then the race is going to be on to get men in the field. So uh, this is far, far, far from over. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll be back in a couple days with another video. Thanks for watching.